Hi there! Well, in this video, I dragged out that old 2011 iMac. I installed Linux Mint 21.3 Virginia, and I'm going to see how it runs. And if you stick around, I'm going to try that iMac with Linux Mint 21.3 with dual monitors. You've tuned into the Unboxing with Marty channel. If you enjoy this video and the videos on this channel, please remember to hit that subscribe button. First and foremost, what are the system requirements for Linux Mint 21.3? Well, here they are. You're going to need 2 gigabytes of RAM, but 4 gigabytes is recommended. You're going to need 20 gigabytes of disk space, but again, 100 gigabytes is recommended. And you're going to need a 1024 by 768 resolution. And if you're interested, this iMac that I'm using, it has 8 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig hard drive, and an i5 processor. After you've installed Linux Mint, uh, you'll be greeted with this welcome screen on your first boot up. Uh, very helpful because it tells you what version of Linux Mint you're running. And I recommend keeping this here checked until you get more familiar with Linux Mint. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Here, it's going to walk you through some of the first initial steps that will help you get set up properly and get you more familiar with Linux Mint. It'll present you with some documentation, again, to get you more familiar, some health information, and of course, there is a contribute screen. I'd also like to add that before I made this video, I did allow Linux Mint to run some updates. This is always kind of nice. Linux Mint lets you resize this. You can drag it up, drag it down. You can make it wider. You can make it skinnier. Just find your preference. Linux Mint comes pre-packaged with plenty of apps. Here we're just going to scroll through the apps just to get an idea. There is plenty here to look at and we'll look at a number of them during this video. As you can see there is a number of ways to navigate this information. You can just hold your mouse up here at the top, it'll slide, you can pull your mouse down here. It kind of snags once in a while but yeah you keep tugging on it it'll come down and slide south. You can also navigate up and down using the mouse wheel. You can also navigate by clicking onto this bar and dragging it uh, up and down. By going through a number of these uh, navigation exercises, I think in the background you get an idea of how many apps are really included with this uh, operating system. It's really easy to get started because you pretty much have what you need. Now whenever you install an operating system obviously one of the first apps that you look at is going to be your web browser tonight. You know, before you uh, actually install the Linux Mint operating system, it's always a good idea to go to the Linux Mint website and see why this operating system is so appealing to so many. Now we'll take a look at the download page and you're going to see that Linux Mint of course comes in flavors. Uh, the first one we have here is called the Cinnamon Edition. Then we also have Mate Edition. Then we have XFCE Edition and Cinnamon Edition Edge ISO. Another important app to explore when you install an operating system, of course, is the word processor. Here we have LibreOffice Writer. And a personal favorite of mine is this mouse and touchpad because when you get to be my age, you no longer have the eyes of a 20-something. So I always like to increase the size of the mouse pointer, but you can always bring it back. Another app that many are in, interested in is the firewall. Just click on your password, click it right here, the firewall is enabled, unclick it, and the firewall is disabled. Here is the software manager. This is where you go if you want to look for additional apps to add to your operating system. There's plenty to choose from.
Now, if you want to change your uh, background, of course, there's a background app and you can thumb through here and look at many of the wallpapers that are available. Select and choose what you like. This is one of my personal favorites. Uh, obviously, you saw it in the uh, opening screen of this video. You know, once we change the background, let's have a look at themes. So, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to move themes over here. And, you know what, I'll open this up over here and put them side by side so you can uh, see how the themes change. So, let's just punch through this a little bit and have a look. So, moving through some of these settings, you get the idea of themes and how it can change your icons here. And you can even adjust the color. System settings is kind of important. Uh, what we'll do through here, we'll look at it. Here you've got appearance. So you probably recognize we looked at backgrounds and we looked at themes. Here we have the preferences. Got hardware, where we saw the uh, mouse and touchpad, and of course administration, where we saw the firewall. Now we're just going to run through a quick exercise on how to arrange your desktop with your apps. Obviously you can take this, you can use a 50% of your screen by sliding to the left and right, sliding to the top, to the bottom, you get this effect. Now we open up a second app and let's, you know what, we're going to open up two more. So we'll have a total of four apps open. So again, here we're going to do a 50-50 split. Next, what we'll do is we're going to drag each of these apps into a corner and we're going to break the screen up into quarters, as you'll see right here. And for fun, what we're going to do is we're going to use two quarters and a half here. And now I'm going to return the uh, background to what I had originally and I'm going to change the colors as well back to what I had originally. And next we're going to have a look at using this as a dual screen device. So in order to connect this 2011 iMac to a second monitor, I'm going to use this mini display port to HDMI adapter. Why? Well, because the uh, cable I'm going to use to connect to the second monitor is an HDMI cable. Something to keep in mind as we move ahead and play with the configurations between the two monitors. To save time in the video, I'm always going to be clicking here what's circled in the red is I'm going to cancel my changes to save time. But if you want to keep the configurations, click on what is circled in green. We're going to start making it simple. We're not going to be complicated. We're just going to, I'm going to talk my way through. So here you can see we've got two screens. You can see the mouse bouncing back and forth. You can see down here is a good clue that this is the primary screen. Just by looking at these icons, because there are none here, there's nothing there. The nice thing about this is you can slide back and forth, but you can't go any further than that. You can't go any further than that. So to play with this, we're going to go to display settings. And here you've got this. So the quick trick here is to see what you got here is you can see the red here is identified up here. You can see that's the red up there. You can see the green, the green's here. And you can identify your screen here. Right, again, you can see this down here and you can see this down here. So for example, if you wanted to change the primary screen, you click on the green, which of course is this screen that you identify here. It says primary, apply. And now you can see these are gone, but now they've moved over here. And yes, you can still slide back and forth. 
again, you're limited, you can't go beyond there, but here you go. You can click that and go back. Now, you can see we're back to here, back to here. Uh, let's see what else we want. Oh, if we want a mirror, so here we can mirror, so we click here and apply. And now you can see they're both identified and you can see one red screen here, red screen here, red screen here, red screen up here. And you're limited, you can only go this way and this way. So we're gonna cancel the settings, we're gonna go back. And then for example, let's see what else you wanna do. If you wanna reverse them, see here, these two orders, you can take the green and slide it to this side, hit apply. Watch what happens. Because now thinking we've moved it around, see, oop, we're stuck. But we can slide it all the way over this way, it stops, and go all the way back like that. We're gonna cancel settings, and we're back. Again, you can see the red is here, the red is here, the green is here, and the green is here. Uh, that, some adjustments you can do when you dual screen, but gives you some ideas. That will bring us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making this video. If you enjoyed this video and the videos on this channel, please remember to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.